Hey guys, welcome to another video, Purple Political Talk here. Today is Saturday, July 10th, 2021, and we're going to be discussing the 2022 Florida gubernatorial elections and discuss a couple of different things that make this race such an important race for Republicans and Democrats in the state of Florida. So we're going to be taking a look at different results from the past um, and, you know, shaping up not only a prediction, but we're going to answer one big question. Is Florida as safe as Republicans think it is in the 2022 gubernatorial race? We're going to discover that in this video. But before we do that, I want to remind you guys to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. And also, I want to remind you guys that channel memberships are now open. If you want to become a Purple Political Talk channel member and to help out the channel, that is a great way to help out the channel. The link is going to be down in the comments and also in the description, as well as you can see the join button. You can also press it right there. So now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's get started with the video. So basically for this video, I'm going to go through a couple of different results. I'm going to go through a couple of different races and start discussing, you know, to what point are different things influential in science of what could happen in Florida come 2022. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is this um, presidential map from um, 2020. So we can see that Donald Trump won the state of Florida, even in an election that at the nationwide level was really against him and he lost. He won Florida by around three and a half percent. So, I mean, for Trump, that is actually a great thing. And for the Republican Party, that shows a sign of progress in the state of Florida. If you can just go out and take a look, just right before the, the gubernatorial race election in 2018, only went to Ron DeSantis by less than half a percentage uh, point or less than 30,000 votes. This time around, you saw a difference of nearly 300,000 votes separating both candidates. Um, which was a good thing for the Republicans. That is a sign that there was certainly some growth amongst Republicans in the state of Florida. Now, what do I think is important here? I think that, again, the big thing that a lot of people analyze is Miami-Dade County. Miami-Dade County was certainly a big part to why we see those numbers. If we see this shift from 2016 map, which shows us which counties that went more to the right more and more to the left, we see a lot more red in the state of Florida. From smaller counties that are more and more, more rural, um, I mean, there's a lot of these counties. I mean, you could say like up north, there's counties that have, you know, 1,000 votes, 2,000 votes. Most of these counties ended up trending a little bit more towards the to, to the Republicans. There are certainly some um, Democratic parts of the state that, you know, trend a little bit more Democratic, especially up here in the Duval County area, Jacksonville area. But, you know, mostly in the big counties and where it matters, you either saw very little shift for either party, actually, or a very far right shift. I mean, anywhere from around five, six, seven percent more shift towards the um towards the, the Republican Party. This is the big thing that a lot of people think about. You know, the the twenty twenty two of the twenty two point you know increase for the Republicans. Now, at a twenty twenty two level, what does this mean? You know, a lot of people think many different things of what this could mean. But, you know, I think that it really comes down who ends up being the candidates. I want to go back to this map um, that we had. And this shows the actual results map. So I want to take a look at a couple of different things and, and, and think about some things. So first of all, we also have to remember for the gubernatorial race, there is going to be a Democratic primary. And there's two possible candidates at this point who are the most likely to win that nomination. We have Charlie Crist, who comes from Pinellas County. He holds a Pinellas County House seat. He He's a former governor. He's very popular. He was a very moderate. Um, he was actually a Republican, and then he sh um, shifted parties uh, to, uh, to become a Democrat. You know, one of the, 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 the politicians he reminds me of is a Charlie Baker up in Massachusetts or a, a Larry Hogan in, Mass um, in Maryland. You know, he is that he was that type of Republican and then he switched parties. You know, for him it might be a positive thing. If if they run um Charlie Crist and um statewide, you could see some certain impacts in this race the where the Democrats can bring up at least a couple of points, two, three, four percent. And that's gonna be a positive thing. If they're able to bring up margins anywhere 
then you don't really have to worry about a lot of the big um, shifts down here in Miami-Dade County. You see, one of the big things that we also have to think about is that Miami-Dade County is unlikely to keep on trending red. Um, the big impact that we saw was a one big hit. Wow, the, the Republicans really are taking it out of the park. Now, I'm not sure if Ron DeSantis is going to be able to continue that, um, you know, that sense of um, big trending towards the Republicans in Miami-Dade County. We still have to remember that Miami-Dade County is actually a very diverse county. It's not only Hispanic. The, the big reason why Miami-Dade County shifted towards the Republicans is because of that Hispanic vote. But there's also very big African-American communities in Miami-Dade County. There's also very big white communities in Miami-Dade County in certain parts of the uh, of the of the of this county, and there's also a very big influx of college educated voters coming from up north, coming from New York, and big financial companies moving to Miami in the Miami-Dade County region, um, in the city that you know that will have an impact to a certain extent to what ends up happening in in the state, and I think that. The the real thing is that Miami County is probably going to stop shifting Republican. You know, another thing I want to notice is that Duval County is one of the big important counties that we've seen shift to the left. You see, five point two percent more Democratic in um, twenty twenty than twenty sixteen, um, and its surrounding counties, which have um, it's St. Johns and then you have Clay County, also shifted to the left. So those are other places where the Democrats might be able to build up. Now, another person I did not talk about and is the other possible candidate is Nikki Fred of uh, Fred. So she is the um, current incumbent agricultural commissioner from the state of Florida. And that is a statewide elected position. She is a Democrat and she won this in 2018. So a lot of people have been floating her around and she wants to run for this race in the Democratic primary. One of the big places that we're going to see her do very well is up, um, up north. In the more you know farming region of the state, probably I would say from Orlando up, where you have areas like Alachua County, and you also have um right here Gilchrist County. You know, all these counties right here, they they really could end up voting for someone like Nikki Fried. You know, or the margins wise, it could grow up a little bit, which again for the Democrats means that they're able to contest this race. Now, to the big question that a lot of people have been asking. How will Ron DeSantis do, generally speaking? I think that Ron DeSantis will do very well. And I think that these polls back me up. You know, this poll, this is a poll from June 2021. Um, one of the very few polls that we do have currently in the um, in the gubernatorial race in Florida. Keep in mind, this is more of an insider Republican poll, but it's still an indicator. I would say that with insider polls, we should probably be careful. But I would say at least take around 5% margin of... Uh, of error, I guess, for, for the party that is in control, in this case, for Republicans. So with this poll, we have 54.7% to 45.3% um, if you even run the census. That's a 10-point lead. And this kind of backs up my 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 idea that it could be closer compared to, if you compare it to this other race where you have Nikki Fried. Again, remember, Nikki Fried isn't as known as Charlie Crist. So that's another thing to analyze. But you see... The, the northern part of the state is going to vote differently to the to the to the Tampa region. Like the hometown advantage for these candidates might be an important thing and might make the race closer. However, however you slice it, Ron DeSantis is likely going to win this race. Ron DeSantis has just built so much popularity that even if you consider any of these factors, that oh maybe the 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 the, the voters in Tampa Bay or up in Duval they're going to vote against DeSantis. Well. The fact of the matter, the chances of that happening are not that much because of his popularity he's garnered thanks to COVID-19, thanks to the things he's able to been to, to have been able to do as governor. Um, so I think that's something important that we should think about because, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of voters do think of those things. So that's important. Last thing I wanted to show you guys for this video is, you know, you guys remember the same forecast I showed you guys yesterday for the Senate. This uh, this is the gubernatorial one for Florida, and as we can see, my theories are backed up here. Eighty percent, it's almost an eighty percent to twenty percent for Ron DeSantis when it comes to chances. Um, so I think that's actually very positive, and eighty percent margin uh, or possibility of victory is is very it, it, it's 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 a very positive thing for whoever has that that lead. Does this mean the Democrats cannot win in Florida? 
No, it's unlikely. It's a one in five chance that they do not win, uh, or five or four in five chance that they do not do not win. Um, you know, at this point, it's looking like Ron Santos is clearly the favorite, and chances are he will be reelected to governor. Um, now, one of the big things that I want to say is the the Republicans shouldn't be as um as confident about they're going to win this by a huge margin because I don't think it's going to be a case. You're still going to have probably a five point race. And then the other thing is, the, realistically, the, the Democrats shouldn't be wasting their money here. It's one of those two things where both parties have to be careful. Democrats could be better off going down and winning back some House seats. They could do better off, in, at least in Florida. And they should do, you know, go send their money elsewhere. This race is not worth it. You know, I think that after Andrew Gillum, um, Gillum's lost, you see that there, there was definitely a change in Democratic um, politics in Florida. Ever since then, I mean, the 2020 election wasn't as strong for them in the House races. They lost two seats down in South Florida. That would be um, Debbie Mercasel Powell and Donna Shalala. So I think that the, the Democratic Party isn't doing that strong. So both parties need to have they need to be careful. Now, here we have the projected margin. This forecast shows a 9.4% margin of victory. I think this is a little bit, you know, over-exaggerated. I think that it's definitely going to be a little bit closer, probably around the 5% mark. Um you know, Ron DeSantis was popular, but we, we also have to think about, well, you know, it might be a little bit um, more um, more democratic than people think. Although Ron DeSantis is very likely to win this race. And here you can see the trend over time that has pretty much stayed the same. So we're more likely not going to see a pretty smooth race for Ron DeSantis. So with all of this said, um, I really want to answer the big question that a lot of people have been asking themselves. Will Ron DeSantis have a smooth ride to the governorship in 2022? I think the answer to that is yes. You know, Florida is a state that has just changed so much and fundamentally changed politically that it's going to be pretty easy for them, to, uh, for the Republicans, to end up winning in that race. So, you know, what that, what could that mean? That could mean a couple of different things. That could be that, you know, maybe they, they go on to win the race by a lot more than they were expected to. This could mean that the, the Republican, the Democrats don't even contest, contest the race as they, uh, as they could. And I think at the end of the day, it comes down to Ron DeSantis' popularity with COVID-19. Everywhere around the state, he has a 10% positive approval rating. Everywhere around the state is happy that he opened up as early as he did. We have to remember there are just states that are just recently opening we know that in in, in July, we, we, you know, some states in like California are just barely opening. So Florida has been open since September, and a lot of voters are happy about that. So I think that's something that's very interesting. So that answered my question. So I want to thank all of you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give a huge thumbs up, like, subscribe, turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. And again, thank you guys so much for watching, and goodbye.